Happy New Year! You know, I'm glad we're together again. <laughs> don't you love my vest? <laughs> I don't get a chance to wear it too often because, uh, well, <laughs> where the hell are you going to wear this thing? <laughs> but I'm dressed up for New Year's and you should get dressed up too. <laughs> Today I thought we'd celebrate the holidays and the New Year by making a very social beverage. A punch. Did you know that punch has existed long before the single serving cocktail has? The earliest discovered use of the word punch dates back to 1632. That's a long time ago. The word itself, punch, is thought to derive from the Hindi word for five, which refers to the five core ingredients of punch. Spirit, water, citrus, uh, sweetener, and spice. Or it's also thought that punch was the description of the barrel called a punchian that it was served in. Okay, let's get into our way back time machine, back to 1632, so we can put this into perspective. It was Galileo looking up at the heavens, being probed by the Inquisition for supporting the view that the Earth orbits the Sun. There's a radical idea. <laughs> it, was, it was the same year that construction began on that ivory white marble mausoleum, the Taj Mahal. St. Paul's Cathedral in London wasn't built yet, and the pilgrims were just starting to settle in North America a few years earlier. To understand the origins of punch, we need to take a look at the East India Company, a company founded in England in the year 1600. It was formed for the exploitation of trade with Asia and India to compete against the Spanish, Dutch, and Portuguese in the battle to gain control of the spice market. You see, there was a lot of money to be had in spices. And believe it or not, it was nutmeg that when bought at its source could be sold back to Europe for 60,000 times its purchase value. That's a hell of a markup, isn't it? That's because Europeans believed that nutmeg had the power to ward off viruses like the common cold. They even thought that it could prevent the bubonic plague. <laughs> As a result, the spice was worth more than its weight in gold. Clove, cinnamon, and mace were also very valuable commodities. Even pepper in its heyday was so treasured that it could be used to pay the rent. <laughs> pay the rent. Hey, there's my back rent. <laughs> Oh, hell. So valuable were these spices that it influenced major wars for the control of the spice roots. Okay, back to the punch. Its creation really came out of circumstance. When English sailors that were permanently stationed at a number of trading posts throughout the East Indies ran out of beer, which they did, and ran out of wine, what they did was combine local hooch, that being arak, uh, with whatever was on hand to make it palatable in an effort to have something to drink. It's also important here to mention that arak should not be confused with the Middle Eastern spirit called arak, uh, which is an anise flavored distillate, more uh, similar to ouzo maybe. Genuine arak is made from sugarcane molasses or palm sap and also grain depending upon the country of origin and is actually closer in flavor to rum. Okay, so what the English sailors did was mix up their arak with a splash of citrus, a spoonful of sugar, a little water and of course lots of spices. And there you have it, your basic formula for punch. Spirit, citrus, uh, sweetener, dilution and spice. Now, even though the sailors didn't really invent punch because it's not known who made the first punch or even where that punch was made, the British sailors did manage to popularize it when they got back home. And over the next century, punch found its way into mainstream society. Whether it was made from arak from the East Indies or rum from the West Indies, punch became the fashionable social beverage of the day. And did you know, this is kind of funny, there are countless stories of merchant seamen being lured with punch, <laughs> only to find themselves surrounded by pirates. Har! where's the punch? <laughs> but really, no, really, it was a communal thing. In the bars, it would have been served in large punch bowls from which whoever was sitting around a table would serve their neighbor. Hello, neighbor. <laughs> Let's make some punch. All right, let's make some punch. Uh, I'm gonna start with um, Appleton Estate 12-year-old, 
and I want uh, 12 ounces. <laughs> I ain't gonna get 12 ounces out of this. <laughs> Let's see what we get. I thought the, I thought the, uh, I thought the 12 year old would be really nice in this. That's it, good to the last drop. All right. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's uh, finish it off. <laughs> We're still not gonna get tw 12 ounces. This is a uh, Appleton Estate uh, Signature Blend. It'll work. It's not quite as dark, not quite as aged. There's uh, eight ounces. You want a good Jamaican rum? <laughs> All right. What, we, what else are we gonna? Uh, okay. Well, we've got a few choices back here on my line of rum. Well, I guess I can throw up some more rum here too, fill in the spot. Um, I'm half thinking uh, El Dorado, eight-year-old finisher off. Why not? There we go. Here's our 12 ounces of rum. Sweet. Uh, apricot brandy. <laughs> How come everything's like gone? I don't know. Uh, end of the year. I want uh, four. <laughs> I think I've got another bottle actually. Kick it around here. Hang on, I gotta go look for it. It's, it's around here somewhere. I think it might be in here, actually. Nope. Ooh, I found some more rum. <laughs> I know I have another bottle. Yeah, I do. Why I have two? I don't know. That's four ounces. And a half. There we go. Apricot brandy. And now we want a little bit of a uh, little orange there, a triple sec. You know, you could use Cointreau, um, but, but I'm just using triple sec because it's gonna blend in real nice and it's a little sweeter than Cointreau. Um, so yeah, you decide. And I want three ounces of triple sec. Yeah, that's three ounces right there, wow. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> okay, uh, next is uh, guava juice. I've got uh, four and a half ounces of guava juice. Followed by pineapple juice, four and a half ounces. Ooh, it's good. So, it tastes so good, yeah. Fresh pressed lime juice. Um, I pre-pressed it. Uh, it took about mm, five or six limes to get this, but again, four and a half ounces. And you want to use fresh. Here's our sour component for sure. And four and a half ounces of uh, pomegranate juice. It's going to give it a lovely color. Oh yeah, look at that. Just add some ice now. Okay. Pretty simple. A little bit of ice. Ooh, there's a nice big one. And all we want to do is stir it for about, oh, 20 to 30 seconds, okay? Just get her a little bit of a dilution, get it chilled a bit. I think we're about there, eh? All right. And I made this wonderful block of ice uh, out of a, a bunt cake pan, <laughs> a donut. <laughs> and I, uh, I put some cranberries in here and I put some uh, um, arrows, um, uh, pomegranate, fresh pomegranate, and in the pot it goes. Uh, you know what? <laughs> looking at this and looking at this, that's uh, a little big. So you know what? I'm gonna have to break this beauty. <sighs> I know, I know, it is a beauty. But 
we're gonna have to break it. Depending on what size your punch bowl is, um, you might not have to break it. But, yeah. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> this is gonna be harder than you think. <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. Beauty. Haha, -ha, cha cha. We want like three of these, okay? There's a beauty. Right there. Sweet. Okay. And just strain it over top. Oh, beauty. Sweet. Look at that. Look at this. Nice. Strain out the little ice. Leave the big ice in there. And what we want to do now is just garnish. I've got some nice little uh, lime wheels. We're going to float those guys in there. Um, fresh pineapple. Okay. We'll put two little fresh pineapple rings in there. Nice, nice, nice. Um, cinnamon. I'm going to throw in a couple uh, cinnamon sticks. That's going to perk it up. Boink, boink. And uh, what about some nutmeg? <laughs> we were talking about nutmeg, weren't we? So I thought I'd use some nutmeg. Okay, some fresh grated nutmeg. Don't need a lot. Uh, we're just going to scrape it over the fruit just a little bit. Perfect. And uh, to top it up, the final ingredient, I've got some uh, Fever Tree ginger beer. You could use uh, ginger ale, uh, but I think the ginger beer is going to give it a little oh. All right. Uh, and we just want to float about six ounces. Very gently. Nice. Nice. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? One more thing. I've got some fresh mint. That's going to sparkle it up, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I think that's enough, actually. Nah, two pieces. <laughs> well, you know, you can double up this recipe. Uh, I didn't because, uh, well, it's, it's just for me. <laughs> but you can, if you've got a large party coming over, yeah, double it up. Let's try it, eh? Uh, I don't really have any punch glasses, um, but how about, that's kind of punchy, isn't it? All right, let's, uh, let's ladle a little bit of this in to this glass here. Mmm. Mmm. Smelling the rum. <laughs> oh, it's really refreshing. Really, really, really refreshing. Your guests are going to love it. And if you're making it for yourself, you're going to love it. Just be careful, though. Um, this can really uh, creep up on you and punch you. <laughs> Happy New Year. I hope you have a really prosperous uh, 2020. Perfect vision, you know. Cheers. That is, that's lovely actually. It's really refreshing. And I get the berries, you know, the juices, the, I get the, the rum for sure. It is, yeah, your guests are gonna love this. You're gonna love it. In the meantime, you check out some of these other uh, cocktail recipes. Perfect for your uh, New Year's bash. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button too, and I'll see you next year. <laughs>